Hello everybody, Gadget Boy here, and we're here to uh, try to diagnose or autopsy this uh, battery pack that I was given by a friend. This is actually the third time I've tried to uh, record this video. The first time I tried to record it, the battery pack didn't have enough energy in it for me to start working on the diagnosis, which is why it's sitting here charging with this um, little milliamp hour uh, meter. Uh, the second time I started trying to record it, uh, my iPad decided it was going to update to iOS 10 halfway through filming. So, third time's the charm. Let's give this another try. Um, I'll apologize if I'm a little coffee and, and uh, gravelly. Um, I've got a cold. So I've also been taking uh, this wonderful cough syrup we get up here in Canada that's got codeine in it, and you get it over the counter, so it's lovely stuff so at least I can talk. Uh, otherwise I wouldn't be able to because my throat was feeling like I was gargling shards of plate class. Um, so we're just going to start um, trying to figure out what's going on with this battery pack here. Um, so I'm just going to switch this power supply over to my phone and set it over off to the side here. Um, we'll push that off to the side for the moment as well. So basically what he was saying was that uh, when trying to charge off of the 1.5 amp port, which is this one here, it was working fine. But when trying to charge off of the 2.4 amp port on this side, uh, he wasn't getting any, he wasn't getting sufficient power to actually charge his iPhone off of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually uh, run some tests to see if there's actually any if there's uh, enough voltage or amperage coming out of that port uh, to charge a, a device, um, and we'll go from there. So this is actually kind of a neat battery pack. It's ostensibly 9,000 milliamp hours, which is fairly sizable. It's quite heavy, and you activate it by giving it a little shake. Um, now you can see where I've got uh, three battery indicators there. So. Let's start with the port we know is mostly good. That's the 1.5 amp one. And you'll see we've got five and a quarter volts coming out of it. That's pretty good. And we're gonna plug this little uh, charger tester in. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and pull one amp. It's set to the one amp switch there. So that's a good sign on that side. And then we'll switch it over to the two amp switch and that's looking good. We had a little bit of a drop in voltage there, but it's almost pulling two amps, which is interesting because that port says it only does 1.5. So uh, that's pretty good. This starts to get really quite quite warm when, when you're using it. So let's switch it over to the 2.4 amp port. Um, 4.88 volts. That is not a good sign. Let's plug this in on the one amp setting. And it drops to 4.73 volts at 0.93 amps. This is not looking good. Uh, that's an awfully low voltage coming out of that port. And when we switch it to the 2 amps side, uh, the voltage drops even further to 4.63 and we're only getting 1.78 amps. Um, these, oh, I'm starting to get that lovely hot resistor smell off of this. Uh, this little unit here, it's got two great big huge, um, I believe they're one ohm resistors um, that are rated for 10 watts so uh, they can pull that um, the, the one amp each off of them uh, but they start to uh, they start to get quite toasty after a while so we're just going to unplug that and uh, let's see what happens when I plug my phone into this unit on that side. We'll see what kind of amperage we pull out of it. Uh, 0.89 amps. Oh, there goes my milliamp hour reader beeping there. Um, at 4.72 volts. Yeah, something is definitely wrong with the charge circuitry here um, because that voltage should be much higher and that amperage should be a lot higher. Let's switch this over to the other side, we've got 5.09 amps at 1.0 or 5.08 volts at 
four-ish amps. So that port works fine. Uh, this could be a bad solder joint, or it could be that the circuitry inside the battery pack here has gone bad. Um, if it's something mechanically gone wrong, I can repair it. If it's something wrong with one of the charge control circuit chips, um, we might be SOL on this and we'll just salvage it for the, uh, the battery on the inside um, to be delegated to a different project. So let's go ahead and, and start tearing this down. Um, I'll unplug that, run it off to the side here. Oh, just for fun, we'll do this. And you guys can watch how the charging works off of the, um, off of the, with the milliamp hour reader here. You can see, uh, that's the timer. So it's currently pulling 5 point, well it says 5.1 volts, this says 4.95. Uh, that difference is probably due to this dropping some of the voltage before it gets to the, uh, the USB detector here, but we're pulling 1.22 amps. Uh, 1.3 amps, so they're fairly in agreement there, and uh, dissipating almost 7 watts. That's quite a bit of energy there, and uh, we've fed 177 milliamps, milliamp hours. Uh, through it. So this is this is a really useful tool here for when you're uh, measuring the capacity of a battery pack that you've purchased. Um, like this one, if you buy it and it says 9,000 milliamp hours, and you drain it completely um, using you don't want to use one of these because they'll burn up. But you can use a a little LED flashlight thing like this, or uh, just charge your phone repeatedly off of it until it's completely out of until it completely won't charge anything anymore. Then you charge it through this thing and it'll tell you how many milliamp hours have gone into the battery. Um, you'll find with some of the cheaper off-brand ones they'll say it's 4,000 milliamp hours and you'll end up with something that's actually like 1.8 milliamp hours or 1,800 milliamp hours um, and you know it's far less than, than what the battery says it is. Um, so uh, I have absolutely no idea how this is going to come apart here. Um, it's a clamshell of some sort so I'm just going to start prying away at this. Uh, if it turns out that uh, it's going to require a great deal of violence to take apart I'll uh, just switch time-lapse mode or uh, cut away and come back when it's actually apart, but this is actually looking like it's going to split apart fairly readily. Um, I think I may actually use the spudger here instead of the screwdriver. Just in case I can salvage this, I won't mar up the case too badly. Oh yeah, this is coming apart quite nicely. He says as he starts having trouble. Let's uh, see what's going on here. Aha. Oh. Okay. So it looks like there's two separate parts of this clamshell. There's the metal part and then there's the plastic part. Of course I want to separate the plastic part, because the middle part is probably just a facade on the case. Um, let's see. It looks like I'm going to have to uh, cut away and come back when I've got this thing open. So uh, I'll just switch time lapse here, and uh, we'll see you guys in a few minutes. Alright, 
and we're back. It's almost like they didn't want you to take it apart. Unfortunately, I had to destroy one of the, the metal sides of it. Um, but here we are. That's what the inside of this thing looks like. It's got a fairly chunky pair of um, cells here. Uh, unknown provenance. We'll investigate that a little bit further in a moment here. And a remarkably complicated circuit board. Um, and not much else to show for my efforts so far. Let's uh, see about carefully peeling these out. I don't want to uh, short them or yeah, oh, there we go. Oh, that was sudden. Random hair. Um, okay, so the little device that tells you that uh, if you that you can use to activate it is just one of those uh, little bits that has a, a spring coiled around a wire, and when you shake it, uh, the spring uh, completes the circuit and activates the battery pack. Um, let's see. Looks like we've got some corrosion on the 1.5 amp side, but the 2 amp side, I'm not seeing any overly visible damage. This probably means that it's a problem with the actual brain of the components, which will unfortunately mean that there's probably nothing I can do. Uh, got a lot of support circuitry here, a lot of s surface mount stuff. Um, it looks like each Looks like we've got two different charge circuits here. Uh, just gonna grab a little pointy stick here. Um, the board's kind of divided into two sections. We've got this side here, which is the uh, two amp side, and then we've got this side here, which is the one amp side. Um, everything is pretty much mirrored from side to side except for probably the values of the support components that set the uh, the current available to each uh, circuit. Um, this here, these are probably the brains, they're little uh, surface mount, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten pin chips of some sort. Uh, there is some writing on there, but Heck, if I can figure out what the, the values are. Oh, that's not going to do me any good. Pardon me a moment while I put a proper bulb into my uh, auxiliary light here. That's a little embarrassing. There we go. Um, Without a microscope of some sort, I have no idea what that little brain is. And then these other little chips uh, here. Oh, I nicked myself. Uh, they are a FS 8205A. Let's see what Google has to say about an FS. What did I say? FS 8205A. Pull up my phone here. FS 8205A. What do you have to tell us, Google? Dual N channel enhancement mode power MOSFET. Okay, so those are what um, control the current, I would assume, the little field effect transistors. Uh, and it's a dual channel, which is why it's got eight pins. Uh, yeah, without 
a circuit schematic. There is so much going on on this thing. Um, I couldn't tell you what, what exactly is happening, but uh, these little coils are what step the voltage out of these battery packs uh, up to 5 volts because these uh, a fully charged uh, lithium ion battery peaks out at about 4.2 volts. You actually have to take uh, in most situations, uh, they'll do a DC to DC converter, which takes the direct current out of the battery, turns it into alternating current, um, increases the amplitude of the alternating current, and then rectifies it back into DC. And that's how you make a bigger voltage out of a, how, how you make a bigger DC voltage out of a small DC voltage. Um, that is probably all controlled by this little chip here. Um, which I have no means of identifying. Uh, it's interesting, there's only one big electrolytic here for smoothing. That's what I would assume that that is for. Uh, once you, you get your slightly bumpy uh, waveform out of the rectifier, you run it through a capacitor to uh, smooth it out. Although, I'm not seeing any sort of rectifier arrays, so maybe it's using a... I'm actually honestly not entirely too certain what's going on on this on this board because oh well there's a lot more I forgot that there was so much more going on on the back here uh, let's see what do we have here we've got this big 8 pin chip which has had its numbers scrubbed off. This is probably actually uh, part of the charge regulating circuitry. Um, and then we've got another four of those dual channel uh, power MOSFETs. And this 4057 thing, what's a 4057 IC? It's Let's see if I can find out anything about that. Uh, oh! Um, my brief internet uh, search here, uh, these may be the chips that uh, control the actual charging of the battery. absolutely nothing on these cells to identify them. Looks like they've got uh, discharge protection built into them. They've got some circuitry going on in the top here. So overall this was a fairly high quality piece of equipment. Uh, I just wish I could figure out why the one side isn't getting enough voltage out of it. Um, I think I may have actually damaged something while trying to open it up because uh, the circuit isn't actually turning on. Um, maybe I can trick it into turning on. There we go. So it still turns itself on, uh, and the one side works, but the high amperage side does not work. I have absolutely no idea what is broken on it. Um, yeah, so that's what the inside of a two-channel battery pack looks like. Um, looks like I've got some more research to do on, on how they step the voltage up from uh, the battery voltage to something that a, a cell phone can use at the 5 volt range. Uh, something doing having to do with this coil. Um, I would have thought that had to do with the DC to DC converter, but I'm not seeing the the rectifiers that would be necessary for a DC to DC converter, so they've got to be doing it a different way. Um, 
I'll have to research that and learn how it works. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this little exploration in the inside of a battery pack. Um, as I can't actually seem to, it looks like I won't be able to salvage the, the high power side of this. I may just research how these work and uh, build a new circuit for the batteries because the batteries themselves are perfectly fine. It's just the, uh, the output that seems to be having an issue. So thanks so much for watching. Um, if you liked my video, click the like button or subscribe, share it with your friends. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.